said, I am the king of the Jews. In other words, they saw this code. They realized that uh, Caiaphas had said to Jesus, are you, are you the son of the blessed one? And Jesus said, I am, which is the name of God. And then Pontius Pilate cru- uh, condemned him to, be- to death and wrote above his cross, Y-H-W-H, the name of God. And the Sanhedrin didn't like it, and they wanted to break the code. And that's why they, they wanted Pontius Pilate to change what he'd written. Now we're going to look at Bible numerics now. Uh, hidden codes in the Bible in chains of seven. I remember I told you seven is God's number. And we're going to look very closely at the work of Ivan Panin, who is a very famous Ruth- Russian math- 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 mathematician who lived in America who became a Harvard scholar and was awarded the Nobel Prize for Mathematics in 1941. Using the number seven in the Bible, he proved that the Bible is supernatural. He submitted more than 40,000 pages of his studies to members of the Nobel Prize Committee with the statement, this is the evidence that the Bible is God's word. And the Nobel Prize Committee stated that the evidence for Ivan Panin's discovery was overwhelming and his work has never been disproved. So we're going to look at the recurrent number seven found in the Bible. All right, you're familiar with some of these, but we're going to go into it in more detail. Examples of seven found in the Bible are as follows. Seven days in the week, seven colors of the rainbow, seven notes in music. There were, there were 35 pa- miracles and 35 parables of Jesus, m- uh, making a total of 70 miracles and parables of Jesus. The number of miracles in John's Gospel was seven. The number of people raised from the dead was seven. The pieces of furniture in the tabernacle were seven. The number of feasts was seven. The articles in the tabernacle were seven. There were seven letters to seven churches in the book of Revelation, seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls. So there we are, you see. um, There are seven days in the week, seven colors in the rainbow, seven notes in music. I've I mentioned that the miracles and parables of Jesus were 70. The number of miracles in John's Gospel was 7. The number of people raised from the dead was 7. There are they're all the pieces of furniture in the tabernacle, all seven of them. The brazen altar, the laver, the table of showbread, the lampstand, the altar of incense, the Ark of the Covenant, and the mercy seat. Here are the Jewish feasts, Sabbath, Passover, first fruits, Pentecost, trumpets, atonement, and tabernacles. How many? Six, eight, no, seven. Seven is the number of God. In the book of Revelation, there's seven letters to seven churches, seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls. Now, there's a recurrent chain of sevens throughout the scriptures, and we're going to look carefully at what Ivan Panin discovered. We're actually going to look um, at what Chuck Mister found in his book, in his briefing package, his teaching, Beyond Coincidence, which you can obtain from khouse.org. And it uh, concerns uh, Matthew chapter 1, which has the names of the ancestors of Jesus. And we can make the following observations. There is the actual text, which I'm not going to read for lack of time, all right? But in Matthew chapter 1, it gives all the different generations going down to Jesus Christ, all right? And this is what this famous mathematician discovered. I'm going to tell you all the things that are divisible by seven. The number of words, the number of letters, the number of vowels, the number of consonants, the number of words beginning with a vowel, the number of words beginning with a consonant, the number of words that occur more than once, the number of words that occur in only one form, the number of nouns, the number of names, the number of male names, the number of generations. Only seven words are not nouns, and only seven other kinds of noun are present. Now, just look at me. The implications of this are profound. Nobody can, nobody can construct a list of names with all these features, let alone have real people actually living, having lived out a life with all these names, actually bearing these names. The implication of the above list of names and characteristics associated with these names is simply beyond the ability of man to comprehend. I didn't choose the name of my father, nor did you, but God, did choose, God chose the names of the ancestors of Jesus. And now we're going to look at what Ivan Panin found about Genesis chapter 1. But, verse 1. Um, it says in Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. In the original Hebrew this reads, Reshith boro Elohim aith shomayim aith iretz. Now the Hebrew alphabet doesn't have numbers like English. They, they don't use special symbols or figures like numbers. Instead, every letter in the alphabet is also used as a number. For example, there's the first letter in the Hebrew uh, 
in, in, in Hebrew is Aleph, which is used for the number one. All right? So here we have Genesis 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. There are the seven actual Hebrew words. The Hebrew sentence consists of exactly seven words, which have exactly four times seven letters. There are three nouns, God, heaven, and earth. If we add together the nu numerical value of each of the letters in these Hebrew nouns, we get exactly 777. That's God's supernatural number. All right? God, heaven, and earth is supernatural because it comes to 777. The nu numerical value of the Hebrew word created is 29 sevens. The first three words contain exactly two times seven letters. The four remaining words contain exactly two times seven letters. The Hebrew words for heaven and earth have its seven letters each. The value of the first, the two middle and the last letters in the sentence is 19 sevens. The total value of the first and last letter of every word in this verse is 199 sevens. The value of the first and last letter of the first and last word in each verse is 71 sevens. The value of the first and last letter of each word in between is 128 sevens. And in this single verse, there are 30 different options containing the factor of seven. Just look at me now. This is truly remarkable. I'm sorry I did give you an awful lot of sevens and sevens and sevens and sevens, and I went on and about sevens and sevens and sevens, but the fact is, this is just seven words. And I've just been reading for three minutes solid mathematics about, na about these seven words in Hebrew. This is supernatural. Nobody on earth can create any words with this construction. It's impossible. The Bible is supernatural. Are you getting the message? I do hope you are, because I've got some people who I know who don't believe that the Bible is supernatural, and I'm going to give them this teaching, and I hope you're going to give this teaching to people you know who don't believe the Bible is supernatural. Now let's look at, God, now let's look at um, the genealogy of Noah in, Noah in Genesis chapter 5. Now Joe, Noah was a real person in history, and uh, his father was Lamech, his father on the left going up was Methuselah. And when Methuselah died, the English meaning is his death shall bring, because when he died, that's the day the flood came. All right? Going up, his father was Enoch, his father was Jared, his, name was, his father was Mahalalel. Names beginning with, ending with L in Hebrew tend to mean God. In fact, this one means the blessed God. Canaan means sorrow, Enosh means mortal, Seth means appointed, and Adam means man. Now look at the right and read from top to bottom with me what the actual English meaning of Noah's ancestors actually reads. Here we go. Man is appointed mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down, teaching that his death shall bring the despairing comfort. Just look at me now. I've just read to you the, 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 the gospel of Jesus Christ in the ancestors of, of Noah, All right, going back to Adam. God actually chose the names of Noah's ancestors to actually reveal the, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Just look at that again. Just go from top to bottom with me again. Man is appointed mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down teaching that his death shall bring the despairing comfort. Now we're going to look at God's codes in the Bible. And we're going to look particularly at um, DNA, which is God's code of you and me. All right? Now, it says in Ephesians chapter 1, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places with Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. What's it saying here? That it says here, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Just look at me now. The Bible says that you were chosen before the foundation of the world. Before the foundation of the universe, God chose you. Think about it. You're very special to God. You may not feel very special, but God